Welcome to our show, Umbrellas of Hope. We are committed to enrich the life of members of the veteran and military community by connecting them to the resources that they need. We advocate for professional and entrepreneurial opportunities and facilitate conversations of hope, empowerment, and creativity. To reduce military and civilian transition difficulties and to help our veteran and entrepreneurs' families to strive. Hi, I'm Yorka, your host. We invite you to be part of this journey as we, together, bring a positive change on new beginnings, opportunity, and success. Our new mini series will be introducing the art of business to share with you how it can enhance your life, your community, and your future. So stay tuned. <laughs> Teresa Talks is a new kind of TV show. I'm your host, Teresa Cundiff, and I won't just be interviewing authors who write books. I'll also be interviewing authors who will be writing books. We'll have fun, and you will be informed and entertained. Teresa Talks can be found on all these platforms, on these smart TVs, and wherever there is internet around the world. I'm excited for you to join me on Teresa Talks on Legrity Media. Let's welcome back Kurt Perl. He's back with us to talk to us about the art of leadership. So please stay tuned. Hey, uh, we're going to talk about leadership and, and how it drives communication. Communication we had yesterday. And these are the six team resource management, or you can also call them crew resource management skills. But uh, leadership is number one because it drives the culture. It drives everything else. All right. If we're talking about leadership excellence, if you, if you look at this circle, there's a, a lot to cover uh, to help someone be an excellent or a superior leader. What we're going to focus on today a little bit because you could talk about this for days, for weeks. Um, we're going to focus on planning and vision, communication, and tone setting, and some self-management. Now, when I say tone setting, uh, I'm talking about leadership driving the culture. All right, how do you define leadership? Uh, New Yorker, how would you define leadership? Or perhaps somebody from the audience could tell us what is the definition of leadership? I think the definition of leadership is it's the, it's the people that we look up to because they take charge of the situation. And, you know, in order to be a leader, you have to have followers, right? So it's the All first right. person that stand up and the first person that inspire others to follow. Okay, I, I like the word inspire very, very much. Uh, is there anything from the audience as far as the definition on leadership? Uh, no, it's not yet. Okay. Uh, leadership, if you want to look at the classical textbook definition, is having the ability to influence, guide, motivate uh, others to achieve your vision or reach the common goal. Uh, let's break it down or let's get a little bit deeper. What's the difference between uh, a leader and a manager for you? What do you think? A manager manages the, the situation, uh, the, whatever the operations or, or a store or whatever is, is the case. A leader, um, a leader can lead a revolution, it can lead uh, a country, it can lead a unit, it can lead a team. Uh, because there's more than managing the situation. It's about motivation, inspiration, and, and yeah. And influence. And influence. And influence. That's, and we that's the big one. And the audience. Okay, let's, uh, let's got, hear some of the comments. 
Leslie Klein, she says someone who takes charge for the good of the group. Uh, Tomasa yeah. say it's about inspiring others. Inspiring. Leslie also is somebody that lead by example or somebody, somebody that has a greater vision. Yes, vision is a big one. Vision, vision is a very, very big one. Good. Now, the difference between leadership and management, if you want to come up with a, a very simple explanation, a good leader always explains the why behind the task because he's trying to develop his subordinates or his employees or her to, to buy into the vision, right? He or she's trying to inspire them, so they have to understand it. Whereas a manager is going to explain the how, how to get something done. I think that's probably the most simplest definition. So leadership, inspire people. A couple of uh, individuals in your audience brought that up. Empower your employees or your team members. Uh, and when we say empower, we're talking about being, uh, allowing them to make decisions and grow, providing them with professional development opportunities so they can grow and mentoring them. There's that vision word, right? The vision has to be shared. And again, that vision is only going to be shared if you get your message across and you've explained the why and you've influenced them to buy into it. And then the last one I like is leading change. Uh, sometimes people are afraid of change, but good leaders, they kind of go out and they, they embrace the change. They take upon the challenge. They don't, they don't fear it. Uh, they look at it as another opportunity to excel. Mm -hmm. So in short, leadership, it's influence, right? Love this picture here. Uh, this obviously is the landing there uh, during D-Day in World War II. Courage. Bravery doesn't mean you aren't scared. It means you go anyway. As you know, there's two types of courage. There's physical courage and moral courage, right? And uh, a good leader is is going to have both. And we talk about moral courage. We're, we're talking about integrity, right? Always being able to do the right thing individually or for your team. Uh, whether or not your boss is looking. You just know what the right thing is and you do it. So what does a good leader do? We're going to get into a very uh, detailed explanation and go over that during the next 10 to 15 minutes. But I do like this quote by John. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And those last two portions of that, goes the way and shows the way, I think uh, emphasizes the point one of your participants made about leading by example. First, you have to lead by example to show them how it's done, to show them the standards you want to set. And then you go ahead and uh, hold yourself accountable. You take ownership for it. And then you hold your team accountable too. And uh, you move forward. So characteristics of an effective leader. If I have a, a live audience here and I'm, or I'm in a small group or even a large group, this is what I call the speed round. So I'm going to give you two sentences and your audience. We're looking for characteristics of, a, of an effective leader, hopefully with one word, one word. And they should answer the question, a good leader must be or a good leader must have. So what do you think a good leader must be or a good leader must have? have. I'm going to give you the first one. Uh, a good leader must be decisive. What else? What do you think? He has to have ambition bigger than himself. Okay. Ambitious. He has to be ambitious. Ambition. Right? Ambition bigger than himself. Ah, a vision. He has, to, he has to be a visionary. He has to be a visionary. All right. Um, please provide some more. So we've got decisive, visionary, and he has to have the integrity that in the, the, you know, something that people, that inspire people. Because um, there's some good leaders and there's some bad leaders. So um, you you want to follow the ones that are good leaders. So, yeah. A absolutely. He must have integrity, right? Because if he don't have integrity, not going to build up any trust and we can't build up any loyalty. So do we have any answers from the audience yet as far as characteristics of an effective leader? Must have or must be? 
sorry. Uh, we had the integrity, they agree with us, and the moral courage and, and opinion. Okay, moral courage, good. Uh, let me throw another one by you. Should an effective leader be kind? Yes. I think, uh, especially nowadays, leading with, with caring, uh, leading with your, uh, you know, caring about the communities and, and about uh, the people that are choosing to follow you is super important. Yes. Because All right. I will uh, agree with part of that. A good leader absolutely has to be empathetic uh, and supportive. Uh, a good leader has got to be firm, fair, and consistent, especially when we're, we're talking about the application, right? Application of justice. Say you've got an individual late to a meeting uh, in the office, and you know that that individual works very hard, works late, meets all the deadlines, turns in quality work, and you say to yourself, ah, I'm not going to say anything to, to John because it's just, it's just a one-time thing. And in a couple of days, there's another meeting with all those same participants, and Jane shows up, and she's late the same amount of time. And Jane, uh, in your opinion, isn't as good uh, as, as John, and, you know, she doesn't turn in as quality work. She misses some deadlines. So you just rip into her and talk about the importance of being punctual, being on time, how disrespectful it is to everybody else. What is your team going to think when they see you letting one person slide and get away with it? You don't say anything, but yet you go ahead and you criticize another employee for the same act. How's your team going to feel? They're going to lose trust. They're going to lose Absolutely. trust in your, that you're taking uh, size, that you, you have your niche group, and those are the... The people that get all the benefits and it, it can all it, it brings animosity on the group so that's when communication and and communities start breaking down great i like that last part about the community right the team the team breaks down for sure and that's why i go back to i don't know you necessarily have to be kind but we've got to be supportive we've got to be empathetic but when we're talking about uh, rules and procedures, we have to make sure we're always, always consistent with everybody. And let's face it, we have favorites. We do. <laughs> but the important thing is that we treat everybody the same and we don't show any favoritism ever. So mm -hmm. some other mm -hmm. characteristics here that I, that I like. Uh, a good example, right? Somebody said lead by example. Integrity, I think, is one of the paramount characteristics that a good leader ha must have calm trustworthy and trusting knowledgeable uh if you if you don't know your own profession you can't teach anybody else and in summary you absolutely have to be a superior communicator now this individual on the right is one of my personal heroes this is admiral mccraven he uh was uh his last assignment in the navy as you can see he's a navy and he was the commanding officer of Special Operations Command out of McDill Air Force Base in Tampa for his last command. He is the organizer and planner of the raid that uh, killed Osama bin Laden. And he had a very, very distinguished naval career over 37 years. And after he retired, he became the chancellor at the University of Texas. Uh, while he was still in the Navy, he gave a speech on, uh, that went viral on YouTube. So I've saved, a, I've saved a minute of it that I'd like everybody to listen to, and then we'll talk about it for just a little bit. To me, basic SEAL training was a lifetime of challenges crammed into six months. So here are the 10 lessons I learned from basic SEAL training that hopefully will be of value to you as you move forward in life. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barrack room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. 
that seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened SEALs. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made, that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. So what did you think about that? Your turn. It did put a pressure there on basic training and us making our bed every single day. But I think it's uh, totally true, right? It's the little things that matter that how we start our day and how something as simple as making our bed right, it can, it can, it can inspire us, right? One of the things that I like now, out of the 10 principles that he discussed there during, I think the speech overall was about 20 minutes. It's, it's on YouTube in its entirety. It's a very good speech. If, if no one's watched it, I, I highly, highly, in your audience has watched it, I highly recommend it. Um, but if you dig into it, what he's talking about there is time management, which is kind of funny because for me, we can't manage time. I mean, there's the same 24 hours in the day, every day. <laughs> 60 minutes is always gonna equal an hour. But what we can manage is ourselves. Uh, I love working out and I'm, I'm very, very busy. So I go ahead and I manage myself. That goes back to that first slide, self-management. I lay out my workouts that I'm going to do during the week, whether they're runs or whether they are strength exercises. I know when I'm going to do them. If the schedule doesn't allow it, I'll adapt and I'll change. But I want to try and live each day very intentionally. Uh, that way I know what I want to get done that day. And hopefully that day will add up into the next day and then the week and then the month. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about as far as self-management. And I have noticed that if uh, for some reason I get into a rut, uh, I'm, I'm not making my bed, both uh, figuratively and literally. So I make sure every day I get up and I, and I, and I make that bed because maybe I'm not going to change uh, the world, but I'm certainly going to affect my situation for, for that day in a, in a positive way. All right. High trust organizations. You and I have talked a lot about trust, and I love the first paragraph in this booklet. Uh, let me read this out loud. Machiavelli asked whether it was more desirable for a leader to be loved or feared. However, it may actually be more important to know how much you're trusted. And look at uh, the statistics there. They're, they're amazing in high trust organizations that, that came out of this uh, poll that was taken a few years ago. 74% of the people are less stressed. Half of them are, they, they put out uh, better work. 13% take fewer sick days and 40% have less burnout. So how do we create a high trust organization as a leader? All right, number one, you gotta connect with your team, be for each other. Now, what's a good way to be there for your team as a leader? How would you how would you be there for your team? I will look after them, right? I, I will look at them. I would op offer feedback. I think an action review of how they're doing, celebrating the wins and indicating exactly what needs to be improved uh, it provides a feedback loop and it, it kind of build on that trust. Uh, sometimes we only pick on the bad things and we don't celebrate enough the successes and the things that they accomplish. So doing both are important, but it's also making sure that, uh, that we treat them fairly and how they deserve to be treated. You know, 
be Good. inclusive. I like it. I, be inclusive. I like your part about that we don't focus enough on the positives too, right? Uh, we always, as part of the uh, continuous improvement process, we want to have a debrief. You and I were discussing debriefs earlier. Uh, yes. We always want to have a debrief after, after a job, after a task, after a completed goal. And we want to gather those lessons learned. What went well about the planning process? What went well about the, the briefing process? As I, as a leader, explained the goals and the tasks to my team. What went well with the implementation or the execution of the task? Uh, because you want to repeat those practices that, that allowed you to achieve your goal. And then you want to look at the things that perhaps hindered it, didn't allow you to reach it as fast as you wanted and not repeat those. But without the entire group uh, kicking in, and talking and discussing, everybody that was involved with the work, you're not going to get a really, really good debrief. So be there for each other, be supportive, uh, be willing to take on criticism, hold each other accountable in a good way. The Navy SEALs are one of the highest performing organizations on the planet. And a former Navy SEAL was asked, who makes it through BUDS? Who makes it through the selection process to become a SEAL? And he said, I can't tell you who gets through, who makes it, but I can tell you the kind of people who don't make it. He said the star college athletes that never have been really tested to the core of their being, none of them make it through. He said the preening leaders who like to delegate everything, none of them make it through. He said the big tough guys that come in with huge muscles covered in tattoos and want to prove to everyone how tough they are, none of them make it through. He said some of the guys that make it through are skinny and scrawny. He said some of the guys who make it through, you will see them shivering out of fear. He said, but every single one of them who makes it through, when they're emotionally exhausted, when they're physically exhausted, some way, somehow, they're able to dig down deep inside themselves to find the energy to help the person next to them. Service, service, giving to another, having their back is what makes the highest performing teams in the world, not their strength and not their intelligence. It's their willingness to be there for each other. I think he, he covered everything, Simon, there that uh, you and I had discussed. And the bottom line is, being there for each other through the good times and through the bad times and providing mutual support. I'm going to help you and you're going to help me. It's not a power struggle. It's not a competition. We're there to reach a common goal and to get a job done. You spoke about exchanging feedback. I, I like your thoughts on the feedback. Now, there's all kinds of different feedback. Uh, there's feedback from individual employee to individual employee, as I mentioned earlier, them holding each other accountable in, in a non-threatening way. Uh, there's feedback from the leader or the manager to the employees. That something that we forget about sometimes as a good leader, if we are effective, if we're trying to be transparent and trustworthy, if we are making sure that our integrity is at a high level, we're gonna go ahead and listen to the feedback from our employees to or our subordinates. We're gonna to listen to what they're saying about uh, whether or not they're happy with their jobs. We're gonna go ahead and listen to their ideas. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and ask them for their input. Uh, when we talk about, uh, you know, criticism, right? I always hate staying, I, I, I don't like the word criticism. I prefer constructive feedback, vice constructive criticism. So if leadership is truly setting the tone, truly setting up the right culture, then everybody knows feedback is welcome at all levels, horizontal and vertical. All right, we spoke a little bit about this yesterday, uh, listening attentively. Uh, this is how an effective leader listens attentively. Given your employees or your subordinates plenty of opportunity to express their views. We want to make sure during a meeting that we're dominating the meeting and just getting a group consensus based on something we've said as the boss. We want to hear their opinions. Uh, visible, right? Uh, we've got to get out and get around the workplace, get out of the office. Uh, here out in the oil and gas industry, I, this is my primary client right now. Uh, I asked a 
company lady the other day. I said, what's the difference between leadership and management? Uh, they're in, in her trailer, in her office. And she pointed out the window and she said emphatically, you lead out there, you manage in here. And I love that because uh, visible leadership is very, very, a very, very important part of uh, superior leadership. And people have to know that they can come in and see you, that uh, no matter how busy you are, if you don't have time at that moment, you can't make time for that for them at that moment, you're going to say, hey, come on back in 20 minutes, come back in a half hour. And then the last one's very important too: always having an open mind uh, and act on useful suggestions. As part of our decision making and empowering our employees and subordinates, we're, we're going to ask them for their input. Now, something that I always stress to senior management that I coach is that they may not always agree with what the employee does. You know, you may have one employee suggest course of action A, and their employee suggests course of action B. And you come up with a course of action C, uh, and you go with C. It's very, very important to explain to the employees why you went the way you did. If you don't do that, they're going to close up because they're going to say, well, he doesn't want to listen to us anyway. He always does what he wants to do. Point two to that is if you explain why you did something, you're also expanding or improving their decision making capabilities. All right. So we want to build this culture. We want to connect. We have to believe. We have to believe in what we're doing. And the only way we're going to believe again is if that leader is explaining the why and something that uh, is very very important right our, our people will always listen to us right they'll always listen to us however they're going to do what they see and that goes back to that leadership by example we can't criticize or provide feedback to our employees about how important it is to meet deadlines or not be late or dress properly for work if we're not doing it ourselves. Again, they'll always listen to you because you're in charge. They will always, always do what they see. Now, conflicts. Look at these workplace conflicts, right? Warring egos, stress workloads. A good leader is always going to know that he has to come in and resolve some conflict. And we all understand this type of conflict is negative. But I have a question for you. Is all conflict necessarily bad? No. I Absolutely think, not. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I think uh, out of conflict comes uh, new solutions. Uh, new, you know, you know what you need to improve and you can you you can't force sometimes because of the conflict to assess the situation and see what what is not working what's working i i, I like it i like it so it, it could be when we're talking about conflict it could be something as simple as two employees having different solutions to a common problem and discussing them maybe even in a semi-heated debate but as you're listening to it uh you're going ahead and then working on your own course of action, deciding which one you want to stress. So that kind of conflict, we should certainly welcome and encourage and, and not be afraid of. All right. All right. Another way to, another way to connect is express appreciation, right? Uh, out in the oil and gas industry, we do that a lot by cooking for the team. They work very, very hard. And if they, they do something well, um, you know, we'll go ahead and, and, cook a, a breakfast or a dinner for them and make sure that they know we appreciate a good job. Uh, but one of the things I want to stress about appreciation, though, you've got to make sure you're doing it, again, because it's, it's warranted. You don't want people thinking, oh, they're getting a meal because they're putting out minimal efforts. Uh, when we're expressing our appreciation, there's various levels to express it. For the best jobs, that's when you uh, dig deep and uh, we recently uh, had some guys drill a, a record well. And so those guys all got barbecue grills, uh, the uh, pit boss, portable ones. So make sure that the level of appreciation you're expressing 
uh, is applicable to the effort that was put out. Don't get too carried away with it because then, uh, you know, you just, you don't want to spoil the moment of uh, sincere appreciation. Would you agree or disagree with that? I agree. I All right. All right. Yeah. There should always be a thank you included in there, no matter what. I mean, there's, again, there's various ways to do it depending on your finances, your company's finances. Is it a, is it a pen set? Uh, public acknowledgement is always a good thing. Remember, we praise in public. A good leader knows we praise in public and we counsel in private. Uh, written thanks, uh, some type of letter, employee of the month. Uh, every, every good company should have some kind of system built up to uh, express appreciation in, in formal ways for outstanding service. So the points that we've been talking about the last 10 to 15 minutes have been really about visible and, and servant leadership uh, for both of them. And those, I think, are two very, very important aspects to leadership, being able to connect, empathetic, getting out, being visible, knowing your people, providing them with the resources they need, etc. Now, we should be coming up on a, a movie here fairly soon. Have you personally ever had a bad leader? Did you ever work for a bad leader? Oh, yes. Plenty of them. Yeah. Uh, did you did you learn from them? Yeah, I learned no what not to be. <laughs> um, yeah. I learned. I definitely learned that I never wanted to put other people in that situation. Uh, so that was a lesson learned, and it was a a, a nice experience to have neither. Good. Good. It. All right. Let's watch. Let's watch this short film here uh, about an individual who is the very opposite of, of everything we've just talked about. Okay. Time check. Anyone? I've got a computer. Got a and the meeting was supposed to start at... at 10 points. Anyone have anything from John? No. No calls, no text messages. No respect. Right. So how's it all looking? I've I've got some I've got some clients lined up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Excuse me. Should I say good afternoon? This meeting was supposed to start at 8 a.m. sharp, and here we are at 8.15, just getting started. It's totally unacceptable to have it up to here with people arriving late for my meeting. It is disrespectful. It is out of order. Why are you people always arriving late? And it's not just for meetings. It's for work as well. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Simon, Simon, I feel like this entire tirade is just directed at me. I mean, that's not fair. I feel completely victimized in front of all my colleagues. I'm not the only one that's late for meetings. Okay, John, so now I'm victimizing you. Really? I'm pretty sure I looked at and spoke to every single person in this meeting it's not just about you john it's about everyone here you sir have a guilty conscience who the hell do you think you are nobody you. speaks to me like that the leader is spineless why are we being subjected to this abuse i seriously hope i find a new job soon so what did you think of our fearless leader? <laughs> uh, definitely not a good leader. <laughs> That's yeah, it, it creates a hostile environment with yeah. a very hostile environment that makes everybody wants to leave. It was uh it was pretty it was pretty uh toxic, wasn't it? Yes, very yeah. I, he just did the opposite 
of everything that we, we discussed, which is why I love using that video to, to highlight it as a, as a conclusion. Um, some of the other things that I didn't like here, though, was the individual that was being yelled at, right? Threw everybody under the bus. I'm a very big uh, fan of ownership. Uh, if I'm late, I got to apologize for it. It's my mistake. You know, pointing my finger at somebody else doesn't justify my being late. But some of the main uh, fundamental points of, of good leadership that uh, our leader there uh, abused was, number one, again, you praise in public, you counsel in private. There's nothing wrong with a leader being demanding, setting expe expectations, and holding his people accountable. However, he needs to be a professional. He needs to be calm as he, as he, as he goes about that. So he absolutely did not establish a culture where people are going to be happy at work, where they're going to be uh, friendly. They're, they're just going to commiserate with each other. Morale is going to go down. And it goes back to what we talked about with uh, the lack of trust. There's no loyalty. With no loyalty, there's no morale. With no morale, there's no production. And people are going to leave with their feet. They're going to vote with their feet. You saw one young lady there say, oh, I've got to get my resume together. I can't wait to get out of here. And we just want to try and be the best leader that we can be and create that culture where people want to stay, where they want to produce, where they feel they're part of a, a highly reliable, highly effective team. How many leaders do we follow? How many leaders we look at to palm for inspiration? What are the qualities that attract you to them? Are they effective leaders? Are you an effective leader? There's one, there's a big difference between a being a boss of being a leader. People have to be inspired to follow you. So are you giving PM, your employees or your family members the plenty of opportunity to express their view? Are you keeping your door open? That's something that we're very familiar with in the military. We always hear about this open door policy. Do we actually put it into practice? Do we listen with an open mind and, and useful suggestions? Everybody has a voice. Are we listening to all the voices on our team? Are we a good communicator? Are we setting a good example? Are we knowledge, knowledgeable about the topics that we're talking about? Do we conduct ourselves with integrity? Are we trustworthy? Those are all the characteristics of an effective leader. Are we calm? Because in, in moments of turmoil, a good leader has to remain calm. They have to be able to de-escalate the situation because when people panic, people can die. There's nothing worse than a dying violent mob. People don't listen. So being a good communicator, being a good leader, setting an example, 
is something that we all need to strive for in business, in our lives, because we always have somebody that look up to us. Like Jeff Marshall say, a leader is one who knows the ways, goes the ways, and shows the ways. So please let us know on social media. What's the best part? What do you like? What do you consider to be a good leader? Mention some, tag them in the comment and let us know in social media at hashtag Umbrellas of Hope. show up every day. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to share three tips with you for you to consider, for you to implement in your life. But before I do, I want to share two quotes with you from two of my mentors whom I love dearly and one being none other than the great Les Brown. Yes, Les Brown always starts his talks and he says, I say this to impress upon you, not to impress you. That is important because when you hear me talk or when you hear someone walk in the room and I say, I am Queen Kimmy with you, i.e., I want you to feel like you are a queen too. I want you to feel like, hey, Queen Kimmy is sharing things that I can use in my own life. She's not sharing these things because she wants to impress me. She wants to impress upon me things in my own life that needs to have a light shine on them so that I can be aware of them and I can decide if I want to keep them or if I want to change them. So you have and will continue to enjoy this journey in creativity with us. In today's world, where artificial intelligence, the internet of things, advanced science, an autonomous vehicles is our new normal. Creativity has never been more important. This new mini series of Umbrellas of Hope was created in order to inspire you and empower you by giving you the creative confidence to redesign the world around you, to create new solutions that are invaluable for today's society, powered by your vision, your, your own unique talents, and limited only by your imagination. Our world, our society, our future needs you.